Hey Run fans, welcome back to the channel. Today you are joining me for the very first video in the new rabbit hole I'm about to go down, and that is a Barbados rum. And today's video, we are starting off with a rum that I know won't be available worldwide. I'll tell you why I'm starting with this in a minute. But this is that boutique rum company. It's one of their brand new rums from the cinema range, and this is a 12-year-old Foursquare rum. So the whole reason that Dorleys is out there is because that's a 12-year-old from Foursquare. I don't really go down the likes of the ECS series from Foursquare. I think they are a little bit wasted on me, if I'm being brutally honest. But the whole reason I'm starting off with this is purely because I want to see how my palette evolves over the next two months. The way this series is going to work, I'm going to start off with the cheaper rums and light or younger age rums and work up to the big boys, the 12s, the, four, the 10, the 12s and the 14 year olds. So I'm really interested to taste this now because I've never tasted this and then see how my palette changes and see again what I think of this like two months from now. Now a couple of quick bits of housekeeping before I go any further. If you've seen a couple of other videos sort of on various other channels and the, the series launch of this, you will now know that I'm kind of in a, a working partnership relationship with Master of Malt. Master of Malt are the guys that I've always shouted out and there has been times where they've dropped me some stuff free of charge and all this that and the other but now we're kind of not officially but sort of working together a little bit. So they are supplying me with some ingredients and some rums um, for them more in conjunction with the other channel that i'm launching british scratch rum modern british tiki but from time to time there will be rums that i feature here that master of malt have gifted me and that's going to be no different to what i've said if ever if i've got some free stuff i've always said i've always checked the little box to kind of say paid promotion i want to point out master of malt are not paying me for this they have just sent me free stock now just to get one more conflict that you might be thinking uh, like the eagle eyes amongst you Master of Malt is owned by the same people that own that boutique rum and whiskey and gin company. Okay, so there is that sort of partnership there as well. You know, this has Atom Labs or whatever. It's that boutique rum. I think it's a separate company, to be fair. But it is all, you know, Master of Malt brands and such like that. So I want to emphasize the point. This is a Master of Malt product. You will be able to get it in various other places, the Whiskey Exchange and all that, uh, all those other sort of online retailers as well. But this is there you know but there i'm under no instructions to say that this is a fantastic whiskey you kind of know my palettes if you long-term loyal followers you followers you know that i generically love younger rums but i'm really excited to go down this journey to kind of see how my palette develops and to see do you know what actually should i be actually should i be investing in some of those four square ecs rums yeah i, I don't know i've kind of sipped them there are a little bit wasted on me I, I generally don't know. So I want to see how my palette evolves through this. Now, the other little challenge I want from this as well, there's two things. Like I did in the Jamaican series, I wanted my favourite neat sipper and my favourite one rum mito. I actually started out because of the one rum mito, but it developed into a neat sipper. Now, with a lot of these Barbados rums, well, actually, with, with probably six out of 20 maybe they are probably more geared towards uh, neat sipping. You would very rarely, if ever, use them in cocktails. Um, now, I did struggle with a cocktail for Barbados. I really did. The, the obvious one would, would be something like the Cordon Oil, but the Falernum, it's like a rum fashioned or an old fashioned. The Falernum in it kind of is a just a taste. You make it sweeter. There's no definitive spec. The Mai Tai pretty much is a definitive spec, like with your Orgeat, with your brown sugar, with your, um, your orange curacao, with your lime. It is pretty much definitive. Very rarely would anyone change the spec. They would just change the rums. So with that in mind, I really did struggle with Barbados. So what I've decided to do is a traditional old school rum punch. You know, that whole one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, and a dash of spice to make it nice. I'm, I'm omitting the spice, and what I'm actually going to do is a traditional, very, very old school rum punch water. They didn't have fruit juices and all that back in way back in the day. So I'm going for lime, plain sugar, and water. I want the rum to shine through and that is i do love those kind of rum punches though however what i've said if you've got a better barbados rum cocktail that i should be trying that i really haven't thought of let me know in the comments below i'm quite happy to go back after a couple of videos and change that cocktail up but the the rum has to shine through i don't want it to be overshadowed by lots of like strawberry and passion fruit and mango and all that other stuff you know it has to really shine through and yes you know, 
these rums, these expensive rums, are in no way designed to go into cocktails. I'm not even going to humor this with a cocktail, but some of the rums coming up definitely will be cocktail based. So that's the cocktail that I'm going for, the sort of rum punch. Uh, if you've got it better, let me know. Right, let's consign that to the um, the, the subs bench uh, for a few weeks before that comes out to play. Let me, I can't even really give you too much about this, to be honest, other than that this is a four square rum. So Dawley's four square exceptional car series, you know, at uh, Real McCoy, Richard Seal. This is a Richard Seal rum. Uh, I didn't even listen to Pete Holland when he launched this a few weeks ago. He's done various live shows with Dave Wellington. Dave's the whiskey guy from that uh, boutique whiskey company. Um, so I, I've got no idea of what I should be expecting to taste from this. Uh, I've got, there's nothing really on the back of the bowl. I haven't even looked at much the, po the page on Master of Bowl. They've just sent me this bowl and I thought, I'm going to start with this to see how my palate develops over time. The one thing I can give you though is the price. And this doesn't fit into my brackets at all, my sort of 50, which I think I need to change to 60 because of inflation and interest rates and all that malarkey. But still, it's 50 pounds UK, 60 US dollars, 60 euros. I think that's going to have to jump up a little bit now to 60, which would be roughly 72, 73 dollars, 70 euros. But we shall see. That's my bracket. I never really want to do expensive rums, but this does break this. Now, I did get a few comments in the Jamaican series about, hey, Steve, what about us? So I'm actually going to do price conversions for a couple of other countries coming in here. So to start off with, basically this is a 50 CL bottle as well. So I'm going to give you the, the prices for the 70, what this converts to as well. But for a 50 CL, this is coming in at 70 pounds, seven zero, which is actually 98 pounds for a 70. I would never pay that money for a uh, uh, house unless I absolutely guaranteed I loved it like the black tots I've got the new black tot the 2023 uh, black tot in there so I've got I'm up to the four of the black tots so I've got a couple of the coupes but I'm not about that because I'm generically cocktails or mixes or stuff like that I do love the odd nip sipper but that's a lot of money a hundred pound for a 70. So I'm going to go on the 50 CLs what this translates to around the world so at the moment 70 pounds which translates into roughly 85 US dollars, which translates into 80 euros. Australia, thanks for the shout out. There's quite a few of you Aussies, $133 for a 50 CL. And then Canadian dollars, you guys over in Canada, 115. Okay, so 70 pounds, 85 US, 80 euros, 133 Australian, and uh, 115 Canadian dollars. All right, that's how that translates. Now, if you put this into a 70 CL, hoo, 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 98 pounds, which translates to 118 dollars, 113, one three euros, 186 Australian dollars, and 160, 162 Canadian dollars. This is flipping expensive, but you know, it's on par price wise to some of those four square ECS series. And this is a 12 year old rum. Now, the other thing will be interesting as well, because I've, I've still got this theory that rums changed after bottle pop in a couple of days, because generically speaking, I do get a lot of fruit off stronger, longer aged rums off bottle pop and then they sort of mellow out and lose it. And the big one for me was actually that one that should be on there, the Jardin Fruit from uh, Agri, you know, that for me was out and out mango, just fruity mango. There was no denying that. And I've seen very, loads of other people comment that that was mango forward as well. But literally after a couple of weeks, after it sort of mellowed out, the mango is, is sort of still there, but you know, it's nothing in comparison to what it was. So I have got to steer with this. There is a couple of things I could tell you about this. Pot and column still blend. Um, still rum, single distillery, and it is 50.7% ABV, 50.7. So not massively strong. It's around about that kind of ABV that I like. Uh, now off the nose, the reason I uh, said that, because off the nose, I get, I get a vanilla-y, fruity, like sort of dried fruity kind of vibe, stereotypical for me for my limited experience of, of high-aged Barbados rums. It's generically why I don't go a bundle on them because 
they are nice but they don't offer me the sort of tropical fruit and the lightness that I could kind of generically like. I have no idea of what barrel this has been aged in and there's nothing really coming off me. I'm, I'm not, I don't know whether that's sherry aged, I don't know whether that's anything else. I'm guessing if it was anything other than sort of ex-bourbon or anything like that, it would sort of say in the bottle. But there's no clues, no giveaways. It's kind of mellow. It's vanilla-y, caramelly. Very approachable. At the moment, it smells very, very approachable. And this is why I'm looking forward to tasting this again probably two months from now. Um, probably six weeks by the time I'm filming. Do you know what? There is actually a couple of notes coming off here. Now I've had a good smell. And I, again, I don't expect to smell this. And it'll be interesting because I'm not going to watch this video back the next time I have this alongside the Dolly's 12. You know, I'm, I'm not. But at the moment, I'm... Apple, apple and cinnamon. I, I tell you where that's coming from. I had one of those pots. I don't know if you get them around the world, but we get like Quaker pots of just that water to porridge oats for flavour. It's like an apple and cinnamon porridge. That reminds me of that. I'm getting like, I'm definitely getting apple vibes and a little bit of cinnamon off there. But I've no idea of whether that's just bottle pop, whether that's like the alcohol is just releasing straight away or whether that's going to mellow out or actually whether that is there. But it smells light, it smells fruity. Um, the barrel aging really doesn't overpower it. It's not like the soggy wet wood that I would kind of preface most sort of 8, 10, 12 year old Barbados rums with. And even, you know, that 21 year old uh, Appleton that I had at the tail end of the last video. Nothing like that. Really inviting. I'm really looking forward to trying this. There's a, a freshness spice that would put me off. I'm hoping that that's going to mellow because at the moment that is putting me off slightly. There's like a peppery, alcoholy, dry, cinnamony, tingly vibe going over the roof of my tongue. It's 50%, but you know, I kind of handle 50, 55s. You know, I did some of the UK stuff that's coming out there, like the Dropworks Funk Drop, which is 63, the Outlier, the Hurricane 63. I've got no bones about drinking them. Undosed, you know, they're just rums off the still. It's not an ABV thing. For me, it's kind of, I would say that is the barrel thing, but I'm, I'm expecting that to mellow out a little bit after a few weeks. Now there is one flavor that's coming off. Where's well, two flavors coming off there for me. Interestingly, cola. And um, not caramel, not nothing like that. I'm getting cola, but the, the the flavour that sort of came off first for me was like a really ripe plum, like a Victoria plum in the UK. I think you might get those around the world as well, but like a, a really kind of ripe Victoria juicy plum. So not raisins, sultanas, dates, anything like that, like proper plum. There is that kind of feisty treacle, bitter treacle kind of vibe that wants to come out. I, I reckon that's going to be more pronounced in a few weeks. I can taste it there. As soon as I mix saliva with it, I can taste it there straight away. At the moment, at the moment, right, let's, let's say it like this. At the moment, it's actually quite an enjoyable run for me at the moment. I'm not convinced how it's, because I have got this theory in my head that rums do this. And I've never really spoken to anyone about it, to be honest, apart from you guys at the end of the camera and bits of feedback I've had. It's gripping, it's gripping the bottom of my um, gums now a little bit. There's, there's nothing really distinguishable coming out on the taste yet. It's, as I say, it's cola, it's plums, it's treacly kind of, not sticky cloying treacle, but, you know, a treacle that's kind of a light treacle. I, right. Here's my honest opinion of this at the moment, right? I, price aside, if I didn't have the price here, if I didn't know how much this is, if I was just blind tasting this rum, I would say that this is a quality rum for cocktails. And I'm, I'm really, really sorry. You know, Pete Holland's going to absolutely hate me. <laughs> for that. I'm sorry, Pete. Uh, Richard Seal's going to hate me more. But Richard, Richard Seal probably even does, you know, the banter I have between uh, Foursquare and Plantation. But 
I'm really interested to see how this develops with a little bit of air, me, you know, I, I, I want to be open with that. I'm really interested because there's nothing on there that puts me off at the moment, but it's not a rum that I would think at this precise moment, I'm going to grab, I'm going to have a glass of that at the end of the evening. There is this thing though, hang on. I've just done a little swirl, a little swig with saliva. I don't know the DNA of this. I, I generally don't. It wouldn't surprise me if there was a little nod to cane juice in there. There's this little funky, I don't want to say agricole, but grassy, I don't, I don't even know why. I don't know why I'm picking that. I'm just... But if someone came back to me and said, I, I generally don't know. I, I mean, I could be talking out of my backside here at the moment. But if someone said to me, actually, that has got a little bit of cane juice distillate in it, I wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. But again, you know, it's, but I should have, I should have probably, well, actually, no, I was going to say, I should have probably popped the, popped the top off this and left it for half an hour before I even came to it. Um, knowing my little theory about brand new rums and stuff. But actually, I'm really looking for it because I've got the opportunity to come back in this. At the moment, I would give this rum... For me, I'm going to give you... I'm going to preface this as well. For me, I'm going to give this rum... Five out of... Actually, I need to go 20. I don't know. A 10 out of 20. It's not a terrible rum. There's nothing really on there that's kind of go, oh, wow, like layers and directions. And, you know, it's just a, it's just an, a decent run. For me, as I say, if I didn't know the price, if I didn't know the kind of uh, the, the DNA in this, I'd be like, my head is instantly going, oh, that put a great riff on that cartel and put a great riff on that cartel. But there's no way I'm going to use effectively for a 70 CL, a hundred pound run in a cartel. It ain't happening. 50 pound, I'm quite happy with doing that, but I ain't going to be buying that for a cartel run. Now, to preface this, I think I have got a pretty good handle on the average 5% of the rum connoisseur. I think they're really going to enjoy this. I, I, As I say, I haven't gone down the ECS route. I, But I think the people that really do like Barbados rums, for instance, there's no sort of traditional pineapple, there's no sort of traditional coconut or anything like that. Um, here's one for you. Does this, for me come close to the RL Seals 10? No, absolutely not. Not not even remotely close to that for me, enjoyability. So for you guys that love, you know, if, if you guys, for you rum drinkers that have prefaced, or, and for, sorry, I keep saying that, you know, if you've had the Daughties 12, the Daughties 14, and you've had the RL Seals, and you prefer those Daughties 12s and the Daughties 14s, then, you know, this is going to be your rum. It is. So I kind of want to make that distinction. Now, if we're talking four square, my palette is, with all the four square rumps so far, is 100% with that RL seals. So does, does it for me come close to that? No, I would rather pick a glass of that every night of the week than I would this at its precise moment. So that's how I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to do the cocktail test for this. Um, I think it'd be a crying shame, but I cannot wait to come back and revisit this in six to eight weeks by the time I get ready to film.